was the year after Colony 170, and work had just begun on a machine that would forever change the course of history. This unit would become known as the Oz OMS Tall Geese, the father of all mobile suits in the After Colony era. And the five lead scientists who worked on this machine were Dr. J, an expert in robotics, Professor G, an expert in stealth, Dr. S, an expert of ballistic weaponry, Instructor H, an expert of systems engineering, and Master O, a master of martial arts and expert of drive systems. And thanks to this team of crack scientists, the Talgis was a weapon that excelled in every regard. Its main weapon was the Dober gun, a powerful beam gun that was not just capable of destroying multiple mass production mobile suits in one shot, but was even powerful enough to damage the near impenetrable Gundanium alloy, making the Tall Geese one of the few mobile suits with the required firepower to phase off against a Gundam type mobile suit on equal footing. The gun was cartridge fed and due to the big recoil it needed to be attached to the shoulder. However, there are numerous scenes and source material that would suggest that the Dober gun isn't a beam gun, but instead a shell firing gun. For example, just compare the visuals and the sounds of the following two scenes. This has led to the theory that there were two types of Dober gun, a beam version and a conventional version and that the pilot could then simply choose which one he would use before heading off to battle, or that the original conventional Dober gun was upgraded to a beam Dober gun at some point. And talking about beam weapons, the Tall Geese's standard weaponry was rounded off by two beam sabers that were stored on its shield. And while this shield did come with a carrying handle, it was designed to be attached to the unit's left shoulder armor. And in addition to this, the Tall Geese could use a variety of other weapons. At one point it was outfitted with a bunch of extra missile launchers, the intro shows us that it is fully compatible with the vast arsenal of the Leo's weapons, and the Endless Walls version of the Tall Geese, which is like an alternate universe version of the standard Tall Geese, got a few extra signature weapons. These are the Heat Halbert, a mobile suit sized halbert that can also be disassembled for easy transportation, and the Tempest Heat Lance, a dedicated anti Gundam weapon that not only has superb armor penetrating capabilities, but is also capable of emitting an energy field that can block enemy beam attacks. And if all of these weapons proved to be insufficient, the Tall Geese was also equipped with a last ditch self destruct system. In terms of defense then, the Tall Geese was equally well equipped thanks to its strong titanium armor. Although, some sources claim that it had the even stronger Gundanium armor. And despite all of this heavy weaponry and armor, the Tall Geese was still an extremely agile mobile suit capable of engaging an enemy in one-on-one -on -one combat. But we still haven't touched upon the Tall Geese's final defining feature. The powerful Super Verniers that are mounted on the back of its shoulders. These can reportedly reach over 15 Gs and pack enough punch to severely injure and even kill its pilot. Which then leads us to the biggest problem of the Tall Geese. The pilot was a human. No regular pilot could even hope to pilot this monstrous mobile suit to its full effect, and it was also far too expensive for mass production. The end goal for us with this little project of theirs. While the mobile suit wasn't the optimal shape for a weapon, it was ideal for us as a symbol of power a way to show off their might to the people, almost as if they were some kind of knight of old. And so mobile suit development continued, but with the focus now being on simplifying the design of the Tall Geese, something that eventually led to the Leo, a more compact version that was also less powerful, cheaper to produce, and also much easier to handle. The machine would prove to be an immense success, and before long, it was approved for mass production 
becoming a symbol of power for the Earthsphere Alliance and, simultaneously, a symbol for their oppression of the colonies. As the Leo was mass-produced, though, the Tall Geese was slowly forgotten about and put into storage at the Corsica base, never to be seen again. After Colony 195, growing tired of the Alliance's oppression, the colonies finally decided to launch a counterattack. Nicknamed Operation Meteor, the plan was to drop five highly advanced mobile suits onto Earth to attack select OS facilities. And these five so-called Gundams were each designed by one of the lead scientists of the Tall Geese. After witnessing the oppression of the colonies by the Alliance, all five of them decided to desert after completing the Tall Geese, and as an act of defiance, they set out to create an even more powerful machine. The Wing Gundam Zero. However, after the blueprints had been completed, they realized what kind of monster they had created. Everything about the Wing Zero was cutting edge, but its most fearsome weapon was the Twin Buster Rifle, capable of taking out a colony in one shot in combination with the Zero system. This was essentially a supercomputer capable of quickly processing battlefield information, calculating the best course of action, and feeding it back to the pilot in real time. Or in other words, it was designed to allow the pilot to achieve perfect victory, no matter the consequences. Instead of building this machine then, the five scientists split up and each decided to make their own, watered-down version of the Wing Zero, with a focus on their own specialty. But even though these five Gundams were weaker than the Wing Zero, they were still leagues ahead of even the most advanced Alliance mobile suits, and the by now decades-old Leo didn't even stand a chance. And so, one Oz ace pilot called Zex Marquis began searching for a way to defeat these seemingly undefeatable Gundams. A search that would quickly lead him to the Tall Geese, the only mobile suit in the entire Alliance's arsenal that could fight against the Gundams on equal foot, despite it also being a decades-old machine. And this then is where we get a small discrepancy between the mainline Gundam Wing anime and some of the later adaptions. In the anime, the Tall Geese itself would continue to fight as is, with the only upgrade being that it got tuned up for space, after which it got strapped to a booster to shoot it up there. After this, it would continue to fight until Zex was unfortunately forced to self-destruct it. However, in the glory of Loser's manga, the Tall Geese would later on be upgraded into the Tall Geese Flugel, a unit with a more impressive head crest, but most important of all, a completely different backpack. The Super Verniers and their focus on raw power were now replaced by four angelic wing binders that focused more on maneuverability and also granted the Tall Geese extra defensive capabilities. Because not only did these wings house thrusters all over the place, but the two main ones could also be used as a shield. And thanks to their joints, they could cover almost the entire Tall Geese. Unfortunately, the Tall Geese Flugel would not be around for a long time. Despite Zex's best efforts, it would be damaged beyond repair, with the only salvageable parts being the wings and a few other parts. This would be the end of the original Tall Geese, but its legacy would live on. Parts of it, including the wings, would be used to repair and upgrade the Proto Zero, which was then renamed to the Wing Zero. And after this, the timelines for the Tall Geese's development convene again. Even though the original Tall Geese was destroyed, Trace Kushinada wanted a new Tall Geese to be built to serve as his personal frontline mobile suit. And for this purpose, two plans were made. The first was almost a direct copy, and the second one would use the same basic frame, but with more powerful weapons. Unfortunately for Trey's, time was of the essence, and only the first plan could be completed in time for him to use. 
This Toggies 2 was built with spare parts of the original Toggies and, like I just said, had only minor changes. The head crest was made more elaborate, the face became more Gundam-like, the color scheme was changed a bit and it now also used some Gundanium alloy for some of its armor. But other than a small defense increase, the performance of the Toggies 2 was identical to that of the original. That is, as long as we're sticking to the anime version. Because the Toggies 2 also got some extra equipment in the Glory of Losers manga. Anticipating that the final battle would most likely turn into a long drawn out one, Trace had the unit outfitted with a heat sword that used less energy than beam weapons. And similarly to the tall geese's heat lands, it could emit energy, and now it could also be fired off as a wave. But while Trace was out fighting, development continued on the second plan, and right before the end of the war, the machine that we all know as the Tall Geese 3 was completed. And its most powerful weapon was the Mega Cannon, which was based on the V8's Beam Cannon. In its normal mode, it was already more powerful than the Dober guns used by the previous Tall Geeses, as well as having an excellent rate of fire, but it was its maximum output mode that really put it over the top. In this mode, the barrel extends, allowing for a beam with an output that rivals that of the Wing Zero's twin Buster rifle. And the other main addition was the shield. It housed two beam sabers with an improved output and a retractable heat rod that was based on the one used by the Epion. And the final external difference then was a completely new head that came complete with Vulcan guns. But inside of the cockpit was another important difference because incorporated into it was the prototype version of the Epion's cockpit system, which was essentially the Zero system that I talked about earlier. Meaning that the Tall Geese 3 had all of the tools at its disposal to become one of the most powerful mobile suits around. However, because of reasons, it could unfortunately not be used by Trace Kushernada himself and would instead be confiscated at the end of the war by the Preventers. And this is how it eventually ended up in the hands of Preventer Wind. And that was the story of the Tall Geese, the machine that was there when mobile suits began and the machine that was there when mobile suits ended. Because after the events of Endless Waltz, where the Tall Geese 3 fought bravely, the weapons known as mobile suits were never seen again. They were never seen again. The Tall Geese Heaven was the final variant of the Tall Geese that appeared in Gundam Wing Frozen Teardrop and is set several decades into the future. And just like the original Tall Geese, this unit was mainly piloted by Zex Marquise. Although at this point he was known as Cyrene Wind. The main equipment of this machine was the Nano Defensor, a system commissioned by Trace Kushernada and developed to fight against self controlled weapons, including mobile dolls. So it seems like it's a development of the anti mobile doll system that was used by the Aquarius, the sister unit of the Epion. Also, one more Tall Geese is known to have existed. This unit was created by Master O after the five scientists had already split up and had a few differences with the original. It was painted in dark blue and had a Leo head, but performance wise it was largely the same. This Tall Geese Z Long was meant to be given to Wu Fei, but instead would be used by his wife to defend their colony. Unfortunately, at the cost of her own life. And this is where this video truly ends. So let me know down below which one is your favorite version of the Tall Geese and why. For me, I've always had a soft spot for the original version with the original anime color scheme. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more similar content. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day and I'll see you all next time.